Kirk, and we are going to be talking about the ever-changing roles of mothers. So, Mel, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much. I'm so excited this year to be doing this Motherhood Mother's Day. I'm Mel Greenberg. I am a best-selling author. I'm a producer. I'm a mom, and I'm about to be a grandma. I'm also a co-founder of She Is It, which is a private Facebook group, and our focus is our community is 50 and over, and we have incredibly engaging conversations, and it's a private group, so no holds barred there. We have a weekly show called Life Unscripted, some tremendous guests that you'll get to meet, you know, kind of helping us navigate these waters of 50 and over. Absolutely. You know, we'll, we'll put a link in, or let's, if you're tuning in right now and you'd like to find out a little bit more about She Is It, put it in the comments. Let us know, and we will send you a link so you can go check it out. Okay? Yep. Uh, sounds good. Um, I'm Karen, as uh, you guys are. You guys know that. I'm Karen Glasser. I am a super boomer. I was not satisfied just to be a boomer. I have to be a super boomer. I'm overachiever. And um, I do shows. I, I'm a live streamer. I love to do these shows. And I'm so thrilled, Mel, that we're doing this show together. This is going to be am so, too. Much so fun. much fun. So it's a little bit of housekeeping. I see we have some people coming on. If you, Whether you're here live or on replay, it doesn't matter. We love you and we want to know who you are. So make a comment. Say hi. Tell us where you are watching from. And um, we're going to do some engaging pro stuff later on in the show. We'll put your comments right up on the screen if you're so inclined to do that. So before we start, we're going to raise our glass. We I got to remember which way we're going this way. It's <laughs> <laughs> backwards. <laughs> Clink. We're clinking. Oh, we love this world of virtuality. <laughs> so we're having, I'm having a mamosa. Um, mine is uh, actually orange juice and ginger ale. Really, really tasty. Yummy, yummy, yummy. It's from the Mindful Mocktail. Thank you, Nat. <laughs> Mine's also a mocktail and it is. A uh, tropical juice with a little iced tea and lemonade. Yum, yum, yum. Sounds delicious. So, and we're doing the mocktails today. And, you know, we're not, we're not in any way, shape, or form as telling you, you need to go out and not drink alcohol. That wasn't our intention. Our intention is that we wanted to have a little bit of fun and have a mamosa. So yeah. that's what we did. So, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna talk about motherhood today because it really has changed um, from when we were growing up with our moms to uh, you know the middle age, and we're gonna talk about empty nesters and and as we move on, motherhood has changed, especially oh through COVID. Oh my God! So talk to me about that. I'm gonna hold your book up right now because it okay. actually is all about how things have changed, right? What's your book it about? Is. It is the first book um, in the Empty Nested series, and it is Samantha's the main character, and she's now an empty nester, and she's not so sure she wants to stay married. She loves being a mother, but she doesn't know what's next. And I think most of us find ourselves in a position at one level or another right. as our children leave the nest. But right. COVID certainly presented a whole new, <laughs> whole new bag, and. <laughs> One of my sons moved home from LA, moved back wow. here, didn't think it was home, came home, they stayed for seven weeks and then decided this was the place to be with his now wife and soon to be baby. So this is a really special year for me as both yeah. a mother and about to be first time grandmother. But I joke with them both, my kids, that they're kind of killing my brand because it was built on empty nesting and I'm no longer an empty nester, but I'm loving every minute of it. But it has changed so much and I'm fortunate that I have my children here because I know, and I want to hear from you, Karen, you're in a very different situation. Yeah, very different, very different. Um, I'm, and I'm jealous. I have to tell you, I'm really jealous because your kids are with you and to be able to see them and, and to go through this, this thing that we all went through. My kids, I have not seen. Um, my folks, I have not seen. My mother, I have not seen because of all of the things that are going on. My youngest just moved to the desert. So that's mm -hmm. kind of cool. And we're going to, I'm going to actually see him because I'm now vaccinated. He, they're now vaccinated. So we can start moving out. But it's been a huge challenge when my son and when I went through Empty Nest, I have two kids two sons, I would say kids, they're not kids, 35 and 48, right? Um, 
you know, they were, they were totally empty nest. And I know when we first met, I was telling you the fact that empty nest to me was not a bad thing. I was so excited that they were moving out. Um, mm. And because it meant that we had, per, for me personally, that we had given them the tools and, and the things right. that they needed in, in order to um, move out and do their own thing. Of course, I missed them later on, but um, not enough to have them move back in. Well, and I think that's the biggest conflict that we go through because mm -hmm. we want our children, most of us want our children to fly. Right. We have done that. We have done our job. They are off living right. their lives, pursuing their dreams. But our lives changed too. And especially for those of us who stayed at home and where our job was at home with them, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're left with this companion. You know, what, what do I do now? Right. So you wrote a book. <laughs> I went back. I was a writer, uh, not a novelist. I was always in radio and television. It's a bit different to write a novel. But um, I went. I'm always, yeah, writing is, is my passion. And it's been tremendous, but the, the greatest gift in all of that was the women, especially, and, and certainly a lot of men too, and actually they added a tremendous layer to, to, to my writing process of in this time in our lives and what we're going through. And, and it, it really is, you know, you're kind of up the hill and then you're down the other side, and, but it's not, it doesn't have to be, it's not, not downward, it's an upward constant trajectory, right. but it is a very defined shift in, in everything. And that's been the, 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 the fun. I've met people like you getting to do these things. Um, and it, it's given a new lease on, on my own life. But I think what you were saying about you don't want your kids home. I remember, you know, when both of my kids went away and, and I thought, gosh, if they, I will, you know, I love seeing them. But I don't want them to come home. <laughs> no, I, mean, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I get it's that. It's not about them coming back here. <laughs> you know? I get that. In, in fact, I actually told my kids that, um, you're, you're always welcome, but you need to let us know that you're coming home. Yeah. You can't just walk in. <laughs> that could be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, I'm sure you understand, right? You know, it's like all of a sudden the kids are out of the house. We can walk around naked if we want. Not that I did. Well, maybe once or twice. Oh, but on. you don't want your, you know, you <laughs> definitely don't want your kids walking in on that. Yeah. And the big joke with my youngest was we moved the day after he graduated high school and he went to college and he moved into a dorm and we moved, literally moved. <laughs> like, there was nowhere for him to come back to. Okay, we were thinking about coming home, different address. Keep, keep. Different address. Totally. Di we, we moved and, and we did give them the forwarding address, but we moved. And that was a well, huge, okay. that was different for us. We moved from yeah. the suburbs. We lived in a, in a home in, in the suburbs of, of California um, a big home and we moved to a condo on Wilshire Boulevard in the city, like very cosmopolitan on, on a top. Yeah. Uh, I Where loved it. Yeah. I couldn't have kids there. I mean, I wouldn't have, right. have grown right. my kids there, but definitely. So that was a huge, huge change. Um, and a good change, actually. I, you know, it allowed me to grow up as a mom and to let go a little bit because I was, a, I, I was, maybe I still am, a controlling mom. Um, if my son's listening, you can tell me whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> but you know, it it allowed me to grow a little bit and not being so over both of my kids. And I think that they would probably say the same thing. Did your relationship change when they moved out? It did. You know, when we. When our children were growing up, we were very much their parents. We were not their friends. And, and we made that distinction very clear in how we raised them and how we communicated them. Mm -hmm. and, and the joy, interesting, I mean, our house was the go-to house. Everyone wanted yep. the, all their friends. Their friends still come to our house. They're still connected. But there was a point, um, and my, my youngest son, after he was done with his undergraduate work, we were talking about it. And he said, I don't remember exactly when, but we went from being like, mom and mom and son to like we're all friends now yeah uh, kathy stover says yeah kathy stover says woohoo celebrating right, kathy, thanks thank kathy you. for tuning in um i i get what you're saying totally the relationship changes um, right and it's one of the reasons that we ch we called this show you know it's mom's mentors we we actually mm -hmm. put that in there because i think relationships definitely change if they don't they should Sure. Um, they absolutely yeah. should. Um, and I know that it changed on my on my side as well, uh, which was was OK. It was all all good. We now I wouldn't say we're totally friends, but um, we're definitely I'm definitely his mentor. You know, 
And, and I love that. And we, we, we are that. We are I, that. I, I, that. I, 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 I speak with my kids on, on a variety of topics and ones they're not comfortable talking with me, they talk with their dad about. So we're, we're and we're all connected, but we, we all, it's, it's been, and that's another interesting um, shift with COVID because we were having dinners at home all the time and everyone over and just the conversation. And, and though the topics change, the, the closeness and the value in, in us mentoring them has, has been incredibly gratifying. It's, would you say it's more like an adult relationship rather than a um, young kids? You know, it's different, mom and dad and oh, kids. Absolutely. It's adult. Yeah, and, and they're, I mean, they're, they'll, they'll always be my babies. Yeah, but I'm they're, all, that they're, the time. they're grown children. I mean, my son, my oldest son is married and he's about to be a father. And, you know, you, you, you approach those conversations and that relationship quite differently, but so it's not that one's better than the other. And, and I right. like that change and I like embracing the possibilities yeah. of that change very much. I love that. I love that. Um, my, uh, I, I've totally lost my train of thought. Uh, I literally that is after 50 after 60 yeah, that's what happens we get you know you get to a certain age woof, all, all out the door um i i i love being a mom but i also love being um a, in an adult relationship my son is also getting married um and in july and they just moved to the desert so i'm excited because now we're going to be able to see them and they're going to get married in my backyard um you know and just the most exciting part to share is i'm going to marry I'm going to marry them. Um, I was really honored. You know, it's interesting. I didn't expect them to ask me to do that. You know, and it's interesting that they did. It was really important for me, for them, for me to do this for them. So I'm, I'm thrilled. It's going to be small. I'm when I say small, it's, it's the two of them, my husband and myself, and her uh, dad and his wife. Just the six of us, and we're going to zoom the wedding. Now, this is a different time, right? This is a totally different time. Yeah. Who would have even thought about zooming a wedding? I mean, well, yeah, I mean, Zoom life. In, oh, well, I know, and I have masks to match my wardrobe. They're part of my wardrobe now. That's not something I ever considered. <laughs> that's, that's funny. That, and, and I have it too. I, it's funny, but it's not. I, I have it too. Yeah, yeah. Since this is a, a show about moms, let's talk about our moms. Um, I, I, you, you're, you lost your mom at a very, very early age. Mm -hmm. Seven, seven. And... Tell me, I mean, that it, it, that sh it, uh, it shaped your life, I'm it sure. Did. Of course it did. Um, she, she was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was 13, which is a pivotal time as well. So I dealt with those changes. And and honestly, I, I since I'm a writer, I'm going to share um, probably the most helpful book that I came across as an adult and, and long into my motherhood of my own was called Motherless Daughters. And the author personal interviews tracked their, you know, the age groups. It doesn't matter what age you are. I don't care if you're 80 and you lose your mother. It hurts. Right. It's a void that will never be filled. But it affects your growth and your life differently. And she broke it down into categories. And I fell into the second one. I wasn't, the, it was like 10 and under and then 10 to 20. And I don't remember the exact breakdown. But the, the, the time that I hit me, it, it, it hit me very hard because those are very, very strong developmental years when you're kind of starting to come into your own as a teenager and, and those things. Oh, and yeah. so, so, so that, yeah, it was, it was not fun, but I was, I was very blessed because she was an amazing mom while I had her. Mm -hmm. So I had to carry those things. So regardless of what I went through and the, and, and the journey that I had to travel that came back and, and, and through me and, you know, you know, I mean, life in general is, is sort of a stumble. Yeah. Kind of, you know, go along and <clears throat> there's no manual of exactly how to do it. Um, so but when you your should, mom's not there to yeah. help, it's, it's you know, yeah. when you don't have That's a mom right. to go to. It's my mom says, my mom lost her mom. Um, okay. She was 50. Um, and not okay. my mom was 50. Her mom was 50. She was, yeah. she was uh, 23. And she's always saying to me that um, you don't know when you, when you have your mom still here, you don't know what it's like to have kids and to raise kids and not have your mom there um, to be able to go talk to. It's um, yeah. something that she talks about. And do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. And it and it's um, it sucks. <laughs> well, it did. It, it, it did. Yeah. Um, I'm throwing some pictures up right now of 
of your mom. I'm going to put this on solo for a second. How okay. old is your mom here? I think she, I don't know exactly. I'm going to say maybe five, five-ish, wow. I'm thinking, three, five. Wow. So cute. That's me. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah, I think I was about one, a little over one there. And you know, you look like your mom, Mel. I, you know, I keep, I actually, I, I wrote a piece um, in She Is It and shared it yesterday. And I, this is one of the pictures I shared. And I, I got that. And it, it just honors me so much that, that people say that. Yeah. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And I'm sure these, these pictures bring up a lot of memories. Um, is, this is your mom, right? It is, and that's she was she she was a pianist, and she actually had had studied to be a concert pianist. But in those days, you you got married for the most part, right? And and she let that go, and that's on her the piano bench, uh, her piano bench. So I love that particular shot. And you're a musician too. You're a violinist. I'm, I'm, I'm a pianist. I play it at my son's wedding. I um, know. I know. Having a tiny little intimate, immediate family only wedding, and this is it in Sedona, and on Valentine's Day. Love it. And I and my son's wife's brother, he plays a guitar. We did a duet as she walked down the aisle. Oh, my gosh. This is this is such a great picture. And this is a great picture, too. Um, that, this yeah. is you being a mentor and being a friend and just having a good time with your sons. That was actually the that was New Year's Eve 2019. Love it. And we were all in Vancouver for two weeks celebrating what my 60th birthday was going was January 8th. So we were up, my good dear friend lives up there that we were celebrating and like who knew what was coming around that corner. Oh my gosh, no, no kidding. Okay, so this I'm is <laughs> so I couldn't help but put this up. I mean, COVID has changed a lot of things. And one of the things that had changed for my family is that we did weekly Zooms. And we were silly. So sometimes the girls would get on. This is my sister in the top left-hand corner. Obviously, that's me with my tongue out. And my mom is a real trooper. She she gets involved and does this. Um, all right. So this is my mom, too, in the middle. My mom is 85 years old. I adore her. Um, everything that I learned, I learned from my mom. No kidding. Uh, my sister's on the left and my sister-in-law is on the right. Um, this is me in the younger days um, when I had spiked hair and I was singing uh, with Rhino Records and my little one. Even he was wearing my my name on his shirt, which I think is pretty funny. Oh, cool. um, I think he went to a show. Or something. Cool. And again, my my family. My mom is um, the person I look up to. Uh, we I I hope that I'm the kind of mom that she is to me to my children. Um, and here we are again, my mom, my dad, um, again, I'm blessed. My mom is 85, my dad is 87. Um, both of them mm -hmm. COVID, COVID survivors and um, they are just amazing, amazing people. And then one last picture, my mom was a hot chick. In the she middle, was. that is my mom, um, just hanging out on a picnic uh, blanket. I love that picture. And my mom and dad. So again, I'm blessed. Um, I want to put this, I want to put this screen up. Um, you you gave this to me, and I thought this would be really a great conversation. I've asked this question many times: Am I as I am, who I am, what I am, how I am, because my mother lived, or because my mother died? And because of both of our situations, you know, one has lived and one did not live. I'm curious. Um, what your take is on that? Uh, it's both. You said. I mean, you wrote that. Um, I didn't write that. I'm not the author. Not that. write that. Okay. So no, I, don't, I actually don't know who the author is. It's beautiful, and it, it touched is. me so deeply years ago that I've I've hung on to it because I really I I got it. I mean, it, it resonated with me on on just about every level imaginable. <laughs> I bet. I bet. I can I can only imagine. I can only imagine. And it struck a chord with me when you gave it to me. I thought you wrote it. It's beautiful. Whoever wrote it up in the universe, I'm going to it's really it's really magnificent. Um, so we both are coming at motherhood from similar directions and yet not so much. Right. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. we have our kids that I have not seen, but you have. Your mom passed at a very early age. I'm very blessed I have a mom that is, you know, thriving and alive. It, it has shaped my life. It has shaped yours, I'm sure, too. Absolutely. I, I think what I loved about that, that little quote was that I think about, you know, and, and so, many, so, much, so many conversations to me, especially this time of year, are about 
what was it like or you know or expressing um regrets that that i had lost my mother mm -hmm. or didn't grow up with her and the the flip of that is what what touched me so because of course when she died is exactly why i am who i am today because i had no choice i had to go on right. living right but that she lived is also exactly why i am who i am today so it's both <laughs> that's 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 wonderful that is wonderful. You know, I put your book up uh, a little bit because we want people to go check it out. Um, if you are an empty nester or you're about to become an empty nester, and again, in this day and time, I don't even know what that means right now. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> the thoughts of the concept, it's fluid. It's fluid. You know, I do want to say one thing about this book, though, because this particular, the, it's the first, and it was there. there's a storyline that was crucial to um, her journey. And it really comes from my wanting to explore the, the aspect of in our society at this time in life, we kind of gloss over sexuality and it's very steamy and it, it, it needed to be for what they're going through. But I love that at 50, at 60, you know, we're not dead. We have wants and desires and they're very real. And I, I really wanted to explore that. And it was really fun to, to get to do that in this story. And it's especially great, in Italy. <laughs> and I know you were hoping that you could go to Italy this summer. That was one of the plans. Yeah. And, but yes, soon, so. right? Well, it, yeah, yeah. I hope we're hoping um, I was going to um, be leading a workshop um, in Sicily. And it just is not it's a yeah. little too soon. So a I'm little hoping. too soon. Yeah. Um, I want to put a, a couple of other things up here. Uh, it's not too late to shop for mom, guys. Um, you can go over to the supergloomerlifestyle.com. Lots of different choices there between flowers and gifts and all sorts of really cool things. But I'm going to encourage you strongly to go click on the link that's just popping up in the comments in a few seconds. This is an actually, it's a curated list of presents and gifts that you and I picked um, that would be great for mom, including um, mimosa, you know, recipes and glasses and a wine stopper. I mean, great stuff that you picked out. Um, I want to thank you for that, Mel, because it was so much fun. It was. It was really you know, good. Celebrating moms. I mean, it's absolutely, fun. absolutely, we have the best job in the world. It is. And now it's giving us presents. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. You send me, and I'll I'll, I'll send you. Okay. That. Right. <laughs> um, we're gonna we're coming to the end here. Any any last um, minute thoughts about mom, about being a mom, about you, you your daughter in law is about to become a mom. I mean, this is like you know generations. Any thoughts it, about all this? It's fabulous. That I mean, I'm I'm walking on air right now, thinking about what's happening in the next few months, and that that and and that I get to experience it firsthand. So I'm very grateful for that because they're here. And my heart goes out to all of you moms out there who have not yet, but I'm, I know with everything changing as quickly right. as it is, that you're going to be with your kids soon. I see it across, across the board everywhere. You know, I'm, I'm off for a week and I'm finally getting to see my kids. So that's the, the greatest thing. Yeah. And it's, it, it, I didn't think it was going to feel so good. It is, it feels so good to be yeah. able to a leave my house and B know <laughs> that I'm going to see my youngest and his fiance. They're going to come over here for brunch for mother's day because we're all vaccinated now. And so it's going to be like almost like the second time I've seen him since he moved down here. So I'm really thrilled to be able to celebrate mother's day with him. Um, and I want to, you know, wish all of you, uh, this is going to sound all of you mothers out there. <laughs> It's not just <laughs> your mother. <laughs> your mother. Yeah, all, all of the mothers, the moms, the mentors, the stepmoms, the, I mean. The parents. You know, it, it truly does take a village. It does take a village. Um, I, you know, my oldest, I'm his stepmom. Um, he calls me mom and I, I adore him. He's like, he's mine. He's, he's my kid. Um, and I think motherhood takes all different shapes and sizes, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's biological or it's by marriage or by decree, or by right? Mm -hmm. Or by, or by choice. I want to thank you, Mel, for our very you first did. show. Have show coming up. So every first Tuesday of the month, 
we're going to gather together and we're going to have a topic of the month. I'm not sure what we're doing in June. I think we said something about summer's coming or something. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's Father's Day. I don't remember, but we're doing something. Okay. Um, It'll be fun. Yeah, it's going to be, be fun. fun. If you have any topics that you would like us to cover, put Definitely. it in the comments. We will make sure to uh, grab them and, and uh, you know, kind of noodle on it, as I like to say, and see what we can do for that. Um, mm -hmm. We want to thank our audience again. Whether they're on live or replay, it really doesn't matter. We want to thank you for tuning in because you have a choice as to how you spend your time, right? right? And you chose to spend it with us. I'm so glad you spent it with us tonight. And we really do want to raise our glasses again to yes. all of the mothers out there. Oops, wait, everyone, this way. Everyone. That way. Okay. <laughs> I know I cannot do this, but I'm going to drink anyways. Yeah, that I can do. <laughs> and that's kind of where the name comes uncorked because it's like, a, you know, it's a, it's a party. And uh, hopefully you'll, you'll crack open a bottle of uh, wine, non-alcoholic or alcoholic, however you want to do it to join us on our monthly shows. Mel, have an amazing evening tonight. Thank you, Karen. You too. I will. I can't wait. Um, I'm going to go have some dinner with my hubby. Um, and all of you out there, have a wonderful holiday and, and celebrate your mom. Celebrate your mom. Yeah.